Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good. So this past Sunday was the BT Awards and I got a chance to watch it. I didn't watch it live. I went back and watched the replay and it was pretty decent, you know, for the BT Awards. There was a lot of really good performances. Love Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet's performance. I thought it was outstanding. Lotto performed um, a few times. Meg Thee Stallion did a good job as well. And even Sexy Red got up there and, you know, Say what you want to. She had the crowd moving. Then, you know, everybody says she's ratchet. And on the internet, folks claim they don't listen to her. But I keep telling y'all, I don't care what club I go to, they're going to play Sexy Red, okay? The audience clearly knew the words. They was, get it sexy. Get it sick. Them damn bubblegum raps are hard to get out your damn mind, okay? So Sexy was out there doing her thing. Glorilla did a good job as well. Usher won like the Lifetime Achievement Award and everything. They ended up muting him. Um, a lot of people said it was like a conspiracy. They muted him because he was keeping it real. But other folks said that he was muted because he kept cussing. And BET don't got the money to be paying for Usher and all his, you know, profanity. So they basically muted him, but now they've come out with an apology. But um, I thought overall it was good. Now, what is very interesting is that, of course, there's some drama brewing that went down at the BET Awards. So first, we're going to go ahead and talk about the whole Angela Simmons controversy. So if you guys do not know, Angela Simmons went viral because this is the outfit that she chose to wear to the BET Awards. And with that outfit, she chose an accessory of a gun. And folks were not feeling this at all. People were lighting her ass up in the shade room. Um, I also commented, I'm gonna go ahead and read some of these comments from the shade room right here. So as you see, the shade room was lighting her up. Um, everybody hates Chrissy says, why? Another person says, when a dorky chick starts dating her first dope boy. Um, this other person says, he ain't messing with no average chick, pop, pop. Somebody else says, one thing she's gonna do is be corny. Another person said, not a good look considering her BD died of gun violence and you have a son that can see this. Somebody else says, when you've been sheltered your whole life and you go outside and date your first drug dealer. Another person says, one thing Angela gonna do is piss me off. Somebody else says, she's so corny. She gonna be on the cob forever. Another person says, cringe button right here with over 24,000 likes. So they were lighting her ass up. So as you see, people were not here for the foolishness. Um, so once she was getting drug, you know, cause she was so proud pointing the gun and, you know, trying to be hood like her, you know, her hood man, Yo Gotti. Um, she then took to social media to quote unquote, speak about the situation. So we're gonna go ahead and watch the video right here. So I see a lot of um, conversation around the bag, the purse I wore to the awards. And normally I don't address like rumors and stuff but i'm not like that never been like that i'm super like i'm not violent i've obviously been through a lot in my personal life when it comes to gun violence and it's very personal to me but i just liked the bag and i thought it was cool and i thought it was a fashion moment and that was it i didn't have any intentions of ruffling anyone's feathers. It seems like everyone's, or a couple of people, I'll say, are a little upset, but I don't mean no harm. I'm super, super peaceful, and yeah, I'm sorry if it bothered anyone, but that's not me. That's you know, of course I had something to say. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling the bag. You know, she's thinking that people are upset because she's not like that, you know, and she normally doesn't address rumors and stuff like that. To me, I feel like it wasn't the fact that, you know, people don't understand that you're not like that. We, we know that you're not like that. We know you're not about that life. You were raised a very pampered princess. Like somebody said in my comment section, they said, girl, bye, she's not even about that life. She grew up rich. Her dad writes memoirs on his phone while taking bubble bath. The issue that people have with this situation is the fact that you lost your child's father to gun violence a few years ago. 
And then on top of that, just a few months ago, Big Juke, who is um, Yo Gotti's big brother, he was killed. Literally attending their relative's funeral, he walked out the funeral home and was shot to death, okay? And they're saying that it had something to do with Young Dolph. I don't know. But either way, these are two men in her family that have lost their life to gun violence. It wasn't like she just had the purse in her hand by her side and, you know, just took a cute picture or, or, you know, handed the purse gun to somebody else. She was sitting there pointing it and acting like she was about to shoot. It was just weird. And it's like, if you know you're not about that life and that's not what you stand for and you were raised well, then why even perpetuate that like it's cute? And also, let's let's keep it real. If this was anything but the BET Awards, she would not have chose that accessory. She would not she would not have chose that accessory to the Grammys. And it's almost like people say that they want black entertainment and they want, you know, BET to do well. But it's always some ratchet stuff in the midst. Why not treat BT, the Soul Train Awards, and things like that with the same level of prestige that y'all treat the Grammys and the Oscars? She wouldn't have been on the red carpet at the Grammys pointing a purse gun. You know, so I just wasn't feeling that. And I think people have the right to be upset because, again, you're not about that life. And you have people who, you know, have to deal with gun violence in their neighborhood. They don't have, you know, a pampered mansion to live in. They're living in the hood and they're trying to make it day to day. Their kids can't even play outside because of the shootings and things like that. And yet you're sitting here flossing a purse gun, you know, like it's cute. So I definitely understand the backlash, especially when you're not like that. Now you had other people saying, what it, but if it was Sexy Red, y'all would be cheering it on. The difference is Sexy Red, that's always been her persona. She's always come out as ratchet and playing with guns and, you know, twerking her ass. That is the persona that she introduced the world to. Her first music video, she's walking down the street with some big ass gun. I don't know if it was a side off shotgun, an AK-47. I don't know. But she was walking down the street with a big ass gun in her first music video. Angela sold pastry sneakers growing up, and we watched her on Run's House. So to compare like Sexy Red to Angela Simmons is silly. There are two different people, two different personas, you know, and even Sexy Red had enough couth to not be on the red carpet pointing a gun purse, you know. I guess she was still getting drugged, and then she decided to write a whole dissertation. Now, I'm not going to read this dissertation. I didn't read it on my page when Madia posted it. I don't care. It's not that serious to me. I mean, she already said what she said, so stand 10 toes in what you said. She acts like she snuck in with like an AR-15 and set it off. Like, we don't care that much to keep talking about the situation. The internet said their piece. You put out the video. Move on. We didn't need an update. So after she wrote this dissertation that, again, if you guys want to read it, feel free to, Yo Gotti decided to take to his social media page and he said, she's just practicing, LOL. So, you know, he's trying to have his girls back and, you know, you know, trying to make light of the situation and maybe she is practicing, who knows, who cares? But um, like I said, the internet had their opinion on it. And again, I feel like this was all for attention. You know, anything to go viral anything to ruffle feathers. And of course, it's not that deep. It's not a real gun. It's not like there were bullets in there. We get that. But it's the perception. It's how it looks. And it's the fact that your baby daddy was killed when somebody pulled a gun to him and pulled the trigger. Yo Gotti's brother, shot and killed. So just, it looks weird that you would want to perpetuate that of all things, you know? You know, so again, she's grown. She can do what she wants to do. But People are going to have opinions of that. Let's not act like she's a child. This woman is 36 going on 37 years old. So she's a grown adult. And if people want to hold her to task, they definitely have the right to hold her to task. So now in other news, there was a bunch of drama that went down with Keith Lee. Now we all know Keith Lee for being the guy that goes all around the country tasting food at restaurants and giving reviews and things like that. And um, he and his wife, Ronnie, they were at the BT Awards. Here they are on the red carpet. And so during the BT Awards, they sat them next to Jordan. And Jordan is the guy who looks really old for his age. He's like Gen Z, but he literally looks like a millennial or a Gen Xer. Um, he's 26, but he literally looks like he's about 36 and a half. <laughs> so Jordan has went viral for those, you know, conversations about him looking older and people also say he looks like Method Man, which is crazy because Method Man is in his 50s. So they also call him Method Man's twin. And so so what happened is that basically Taraji 
is giving out flowers and she's flirting with who she thinks is Keith Lee, but it's really Jordan. And it's just like a really awkward exchange. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this right here. Uh-oh. The Method Man look alike. Method's married, are you? Are you? <laughs> Hi. How are you? Mr. Keith Lee, I know what you're thinking right now. This is about a 10.9 out of a 10. Uh, oh, I got caught up in my own inner monologue. I'm so sorry. You're thinking this is a 10, a, a 10.9 out of 10. My bad. You fine too, so call me. Give him his flower. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that video. So a lot of people noticed that Keith Lee's wife, Ronnie, definitely made a face because it was like Taraji was flirting with her husband. It's like, uh, yeah, you're trying to give him a rose and say he's cute. Um, I'm his wife and I'm sitting right here. So she definitely, you could tell by her energy, she kind of low-key felt the way. Um, so then Keith Lee takes to social media and he posts the following. He says, our name will be known in every room. It's supposed to be when it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to with no confusion. God is amazing. Hashtag thankful. Then he takes the rose that Taraji gave him and he throws it on the ground. And so a lot of people felt like, okay, why are you recording this? You throwing the rose halfway across the room. Well, he just dropped it. He didn't throw it like a football, y'all. And people were saying that it was unnecessary and very sassy, you know? And so me personally, I did think it was a bit extra. And Little Scrappy also spoke on the situation. So this is what Little Scrappy had to say. He says, it was an honest mistake, my boy. Things happen to us all. But on the real, your name known for being a food critic and it worked. But sometimes it doesn't. So cool, buddy. But we got to be better at recognizing and respecting our people. It works both ways. So a lot of people agree with Lil Scrappy on that situation. Now, I do feel like it was an honest mistake. And, you know, we got to also keep it real. Taraji is a what we would consider an A-list celebrity. She's been in many blockbuster movies. She runs in a whole different circle. Okay, I'm not saying that she's not on TikTok or on social media. But a lot of these shows are inviting more and more influencers. A lot of these typical influencers, they're not at A-list celebrity events. You're not going to go to the average, you know, Grammy party and see a Keith Lee or see a Charles and Netta, right? So BET and other, you know, smaller platforms will invite influencers to come, especially ones who are viral. So because she, you know, is in different circles, she may not know who he is. You know, to be honest with you, there's people that I still run across Every day on social media, I've never seen them before. They happen to come on my feed. I click on their page. They got 10 million followers. I'm like, damn, where have I been? This person got 10 million followers. Never heard of them. You know, so it happens all the time. And so I don't think she meant any malice by it. But again, we also have to make sure that if we're going to host shows, that we understand what we're being asked to do and that we know what, you know, who each person is, you know. So I think she maybe could have tightened it up a bit. But once she made a mistake, you know, what I'm saying she did own it and, you know, apologize. And I think she was just trying to play it off by saying that he's cute. Here goes a rose. Call me. You know, she was just trying to add her comedic spin. I don't think she was purposely trying to disrespect Keith Lee's wife, you know, but. After Keith Lee got drugged for basically tossing the rose on the ground, he decided to clarify the situation. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video here. Last night was the BT Awards, and right now, it's something on my mind. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, I want to start by saying, I am not upset at Taraji P. Henson by any stretch of the imagination. And not only that, in my opinion, she smoked it last night. I don't think for one second Taraji had any ill will or any ill intentions behind the situation. The situation happened the way it did. It is what it is. I made a video last night where I had the rose that was given to me in my hand and I let it fall on the floor. The reason I did this had nothing to do with Taraji P. Henson. The reason I dropped it on the floor is that I wholeheartedly believe that wasn't my rose. That wasn't my rose. That wasn't my moment. It was given to me, but it wasn't mine. And I always say, I don't want nothing that ain't mine. That one was meant for me, nothing less, nothing more. The entire segment on the production side felt extremely rushed. Not only did it feel rushed, it did not feel intentional. It did not feel purposeful. I'm forever thankful for every room that I'm in. I was more than thankful and more than grateful to just sit there and enjoy the show. Me and my wife, we looked amazing. We felt amazing. We was enjoying the show. I've always spoke about my social anxiety. And for me, just to get out and be in that moment was more than enough for me. So to take me and my wife out of our seats, 
put us in different seats, give Taraji no direction to who we are or what we do, felt extremely unprepared and unprofessional to me. I'm personally a fan of Taraji. I've been for years and I always will be. I love to see her get the recognition that she deserved in that moment and had a platform and a stage that she's always deserved. For this situation to take away from her moment and our moment was unfair to both of us. And another example of this is a picture of my wife has been going around and it was a small part caught from an entire moment to make it seem like she had an attitude with Taraji. My wife and myself understand the flirting that Taraji was doing was fully improv and fully joke. It was a hard situation for all of us to be in. We fully understand she made it up on the fly. I was there to just enjoy the show. I was invited. No situations in life in general. I never longed for the spotlight. If I wanted the spotlight, I would have accepted a quarter of the opportunities that's been presented to us. But none of those opportunities were for me or my family. If you understand that, you understand it. If you don't, I'm okay with that. I'm always gonna be myself. I've always been myself. Nothing about this journey, about this ride, about where we at or where we gonna be is gonna change me. Never have and never will. Never once was I upset that Taraji didn't know who I was. Everything that's for me will be for me. Everything that's for my family will be for my family. Everything that's for you will be for you. When it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to be, with no confusion. I said that last night and that was still misconstrued and I stand on it a thousand percent. Whatever room I'm supposed to be in, whoever's supposed to know me, whenever they're supposed to know me, it will happen how it's supposed to happen. Last night, while well, I appreciate the opportunity, it wasn't my moment and that's okay. I'm cool with that. And for every single person that's been on this journey with me and that's still on this journey with me, I'm forever grateful. I appreciate y'all. I can't say it enough. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. We all humans. We all make mistakes. It is what it is. I just wish they would have set both of us up for more success in that situation. That's it. God bless you. All right, honey. So y'all just heard what Keith Lee had to say. He did a lot of explaining. I think it wouldn't have been so bad if he would have just left it. I mean, he already posted it. Why post and delete? You know, when you delete stuff and it looks like you're trying to cover up something. You know, some people are saying, oh, his mask slipped. This is the real Keith Lee. He's a nasty individual. I just don't think the situation is that deep. I think, you know, he feels like what's meant for him is for him. He talked about the unprofessionalism, them moving him and his wife to the front, not letting them know, you know, this was some type of skit or that Taraji was going to come out and acknowledge them. So it seemed like it was a lot of, you know, just... I don't know. I don't want to say unprofessionalism, but it just seemed like a lot of chaos. I think that's a better word. It seemed like it was a lot of chaos with trying to just get this scene filmed for television. And, you know, everything for the most part is live. So things happen. But I don't think Keith Lee's a bad person by any stretch of the imagination. I think him dropping the rose, it was kind of weird. Like, okay, it's not that serious. But I also, this is one little blip on the radar with Keith Lee. He's done so many good things for people and, you know, put restaurants on the map that a lot of us wouldn't have known existed, made it where there were lines around the corner. He basically put Atlanta and their nonsense on blast. It needed to be done by somebody. So thank goodness for Keith Lee. So I think this too shall pass. Um, I just think he went too quickly with that first video. I think if he would have just let everything die down and then did the whole clarification video, then there wouldn't have been anything for anybody else to misconstrue with him dropping the rose. Because you literally had people on social media acting like he flung the rose in the river and it just, you know, it went down the River Nile. And how dare he? He's so ungrateful. Another black man disrespecting a black woman. It's like, how did y'all get that from this little action, but you know, that's social media for you. You know, I just think going forward, he just needs to understand that things happen and you may want to just clarify it and not do a post and delete. Cause then that just amplifies, you know, the negativity and it makes people come to conclusions that may not be true. So like I said, this year's BET was definitely interesting. You know, lots of good acts, um, lots of funny moments as well. So let's go ahead and get the discussion pop. I look forward to hearing from you guys. What do you guys feel about this whole drama with Angela Simmons and the the, you know what I'm saying, the gun bag and her pointing it and, you know, the constant apologies from her. How do you guys feel about what Yo Gotti had to say in response? And then last but not least, how do y'all feel about the entire Keith Lee, Taraji P. Henson situation? Do you feel like, you know, Taraji was wrong and unprofessional? Do you feel like it was just a mistake? And then how do you feel about Keith Lee posting and deleting the Rose video and then clarifying it? Do you guys buy his apology and clarification? Or do you feel like, you know, he's getting big headed? Because I've seen people say that as well. But ooh, we child. And then also, who was your favorite performance of the night? If you got a chance to watch all the performers, who did you enjoy? So leave a comment down below. Feel free to share the video. Don't forget to like the video. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. Yeah.
If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family.